What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing the preview in the Premier League between Manchester City and Sheffield United, our final game of 2023 and what a year 2023 has been for Manchester City Football Club. So before I do crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe to my channel. It is free to subscribe. Now less than 600 subs away from my aim of 33,000 subscribers. Also don't don't forget social media links there in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Do leave a thumbs up, 100 likes is the aim and do get your thoughts in the comments below including your score and team prediction for this game. Finally this video is sponsored and brought to you by Betmate. They're running a Saturday 3pm pot made up of £500. Paying up to the top 25 places it's £150 for the winner. Five pounds to join the game. Pot is made up of Aston Villa taking on Burnley, Crystal Palace taking on Brentford, Manchester City taking on Sheffield United, and Wolverhampton Wanderers taking on Everton. You can select up to two players from each team. It's a three app to download. The link is in the description. It is available to anybody who is aged 18 years old or over. It is available in the UK only. If you use code JSGC10 on sign up, you'll get £10 in free bets, and you can use them free bets to join this pot for free. There are lots of other available pots for you to go and check out as well, not just game pots, but you also got things like both teams to score, full-time results with lots of big prizes, so do go and check it out, it's a great app, links and details there in the description, I will speak more about Betmate later in the video. Finally, do remember, if you are going to gamble, do gamble responsibly, and when the fun stops, stop. So, on to the match information for this game, it's to the Etihad Stadium in the Premier League on Saturday the 30th of December 2023 with a 3pm GMT kickoff time. The game isn't being broadcast live in the UK, it is in the 3pm blackout. Anybody that is heading to the Etihad for this game do have a great time. As I said, it is Manchester City's last game of 2023. It does mean there is going to be a dedication to all those associated with the clubs, whether that be the fans, uh, any of the members of staff, or anybody associated with Manchester City who's passed away in 2023. A tribute will be paid to them before the game. We saw something similar from Everton away. That was their turn at Goodison Park, and it's Manchester City's turn here at the Etihad Stadium. So, we're taking on Sheffield United, who formed in 1889. Some interesting facts about them. Their home, Bramall Lane, is the oldest major stadium in the world. It housed Harlem, the Sheffield Club, uh, which was a football match played, uh, I think, in 1860 to 1862. There's a bit of a debate about uh, what date, uh, the exact date was, of this football match. Sheffield United took Bramall Lane as their home in 1889. Before that, it was a multi-purpose uh, stadium, which meant other sports were being played at the stadium, which was mainly cricket. And you won't be surprised to hear that from Sheffield Cricket, club is where Sheffield United originated from. There's lots of clubs up north that originated from cricket clubs. Burnley Cricket Club, I think Preston North End are another one as well. Some very historic, prestigious football clubs there. Uh, and a lot of them founding members of the Football League as well who formed from cricket clubs. So... There we go. Uh, they are known as the Blades due to Sheffield's tie with steel making, hence the city's name is the Steel City. Their main rivals are Sheffield Wednesday. Their derby is known as the Steel City Derby. Sheffield United do have four FA Cups to their name. They've never won a top division. I don't think they've won a League Cup either, but do have four of the most prestigious domestic cup competition in the world. So, in the Premier League so far, find themselves 20 of two points uh, at the bottom. They're on just nine points at the halfway stage. They've only won two games so far this season. Seven points from safety. They're needing points. They're needing wins and soon. In terms of their form, one win in the last four games in the Premier League. They beat Brentford at home 1-0 before losing away to Chelsea by two goals to nil. Drew away at Aston Villa 1-0. Very unlucky not to pick up three points there and then lost 3-2 at home to Luton Town in their last game, which was a very poor result. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, so it's not the form's not been great, but it's not been horrific. It's not loss after loss after loss after loss. There's the fighting spirit there. Uh, I think since uh, Heckenbottom's left and they've brought Chris Wilder back, I think Sheffield United, to me, are more difficult to beat. It's easy to be blinded by that game against Luton Town at home where Sheffield United changed their formation went with a more attacking formation trying to score goals because they needed to win that game uh, so they've really gone for it yet yeah, their approach against Aston Villa to sit back hit on the counter attack and cause problems 
problems that way with a low defensive block in place works really well and I suspect that that's what Sheffield United's approach is going to be here at the Etihad Stadium. It is a free hit for them, they're not expected to take anything from Manchester City but Sheffield United are needing points and soon so if they could get a big scalp at the Etihad then that could just be their pivotal moment between uh, dropping back down to the Championship and yo-yoing and staying in the Premier League. So Manchester City need to be careful. In terms of dangers, Cameron Archer could be starting. Uh, he's got pace, he's precise, he's good in front of goal. Could cause Manchester City's high line a lot of problems. Question is, I suspect Sheffield United are only going to go with one up top. So it'll either be Cameron Archer or it'll be Ollie McBurney. Now, Ollie McBurney did come off the bench at Bramall Lane against us earlier in the season and did score. It was an equalising goal quite late on. It took a Rodri late winner for Manchester City to beat them by two goals to one. McBurney uh, is physical, powerful, good in front of goal, got good hold-up play, similar to how Beto were playing against Everton. Uh, and then you saw him go off and Dominic Calvert-Lewin come on to very different strikers and that's what Sheffield United have got here. In an ideal world I think they'd like to go with an attacking two and take the game to Manchester City. Very dangerous to do that to, to do that to go with one less midfielder and go with the extra attacker in particular when Manchester City are more than likely going to be having 65 plus percent possession in this game. Uh, looking further ahead into their team James McAtee top quality player but he's only on loan at Sheffield United is ineligible for this game. Um, I expect to see Fodderingham starting in goal. Uh, Captain Anul Armoured uh, Armad Hozic, he's suspended for this game so that is a big blow due to five yellow cards so uh, their defence looking a little bit stretched, uh, you've got Gustavo Hamer suspended, Jebison, Tom Davis John Egan, Chris Basham, they're all ruled out uh, as well uh, as I said, Armad Hodic is out uh, suspended but Jaden Bogle is expected to return and that will allow them to go back to the 3-4-2-1 formation which they played against Aston Villa rather than the traditional 4-4-2 which they went against Luton looking to attack which I don't think Sheffield United are going to do in this game. So it does mean that they're going to line up with, I expect their starting line to be, or something similar to Fodderingham starting in goal, a back three made up of Boulder, Robinson and Trusty, Bogle on the right wing, uh, LaRouche on the left wing, Norwood, Sousa in the middle with Sil uh, Silmani on one side, Brooks on the other, potentially one of Cameron Archer or Ollie McBurney starting up top. For Manchester City, formed in 1894, you can trace our roots right back to 1880 as St. Mark's. Some interesting facts about Manchester City, uh, we're the current treble winners, we're the current Premier League champions, we've got nine top division titles, seven-time FA Cup winners, eight-time League Cup winners, one-time European Cup winners, Cup winners, one-time European Super Cup winners, one-time Champions League winners, and the one-time and current champions of the world. Led by manager Pep Guard, Diola currently find ourselves fourth in the Premier League, but a chance here to get further pressure onto the teams above us, Aston Villa. Arsenal get some pressure onto them chance for us to get some more points clear of Tottenham Tottenham they dropped points uh, yesterday in their Premier League match away against Brighton they lost by four goals to two so there's a chance here for Man City to get some clear daylight between them top four places and Champions League guaranteed football for next season and the chasing pack and we can start them thinking about Aston Villa who are playing at the same time uh, as Manchester City at home against Burnley on Saturday we can leapfrog Arsenal before their away match against Fulham. All of a sudden, uh, if Aston Villa and Manchester City win, Arsenal go from pushing for the Premier League title down to fourth, away match against Fulham, out of form Fulham, got a point to prove, could just be very difficult for Arsenal. If they end up going behind in that game, all of a sudden, things look very tricky. So it's a very fine, important part of the season, but the pressure firmly needs to be applied by Manchester City. We've got that game in hand. We need to get the points on board as well. We're chasing at the end of the day. Liverpool, they play Monday night at home against Newcastle. So a chance there to get some pressure onto Liverpool in that match against Anfield. Now, I do always say, expect your opponents to win. So with that in mind, Manchester City just... Plain and simple, need to win this game, move on and head on into the next one. In terms of City's form, won five of our last six games in all competition. Uh, only dropped points in our home match against Crystal Palace in our last six games, being 2-0 up in the 75th minute. Really should have been a win for Manchester City. However, we haven't won in our last three Premier League games at the Etihad Stadium. Liverpool, we drew one all. Spurs, we drew 3 all, And then Crystal Palace, we drew 2 all. So Manchester City uh, needs to try and get back to winning ways. We do have dangers everywhere on the pitch. In terms of injury news, Kevin De Bruyne, he's back in training. I'm hearing, potentially, could make the bench. 
maybe for this game. I think that's a bit soon, in my complete honest opinion. The positive here is Kevin De Bruyne is training. I've not seen Haaland. I've not seen Doku training as much with Manchester City. But Kevin De Bruyne is, which means potentially he is in contention. And the only way Manchester City will be able to get Kevin De Bruyne up to match fitness and match sharpness is to give him some minutes here and there. Now, if Manchester City end up going and doing very well out of this game, you know, you find yourself 4-0, 5-0 up, which would be absolutely brilliant. By the time you hit the 70th, 80th minute, you could lock Kevin De Bruyne on for 10 minutes, say, go in for no challenges, uh, just kick the ball around, see how you feel, and we can assess you from there. So Kevin De Bruyne could be in contention here for Manchester City. I suspect it may be another three or four weeks before we see him up and going and really rolling for Manchester City, but potentially could make the match day squad. Ruben Diaz, he trains after an illness against Everton. John Stones, however, he's out for weeks, not months, which is good news, but he is going to be missing from this game. So with that in mind, I'm going to pop up my team prediction now. I think it'll be Edison starting in goal, then it'll be Kyle Walker, Akanji, Ake, Gavardial, with Akanji going more into defensive midfield to support Rodri. I've gone with Mateus Nunes and Phil Foden as my two other central midfielders. I was impressed with both of them against Everton, in particular Phil Foden, so I'd like to see him going through the middle. He's hungry, he wants to play through the middle, and it allows Bernardo Silva onto that right wing, Jack Grealish on the left wing, and Julian Alvarez starting up top. Anyone that's feeling tired, feels like they need to be rotated, then City should do that. However, I want you to bear in mind that Manchester City were not playing uh, for eight days after this game. It's a big Premier League game. And if we do want to rotate in eight days' time in the FA Cup third round match against uh, Huddersfield of the Championship, then is the time to rotate rather than here. All depends on how tired the players are. We'll have to wait and see. Moving on to my score prediction here. I'm going for a 2-0 solid win for Manchester City. I think it will be a couple of goals. Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden in the first half and City to try and cruise it in the second half. Start making them subs that uh, City are looking for is what I think they'll do. I'm not too sure Sheffield United have enough about them to cause City too many problems. But if they do take the lead, this could be a very tricky game for Manchester City. So we must be weary. In terms of betting tips, I think 50-plus booking points. I think Sheffield United will try and rough us up. Phil Foden to score or assist any time. 2-0 in the first half for Manchester City and 0-0 in the second half and I'm going for not both teams to score here. Now moving on to today's video sponsor, Betmate. £500 pot, £5 entry fee. Links and details there in the description. Remember use code JSGC10 on sign up for £10 in free bets and you can use them free bets. To join this pot for free you can select up to two players from each team for this pot. Pot code is FF-PREM-3PMS-3 Three zero one two. the date, 30th of the 12th, 30th of December, Three zero one two. My team for this pot then, I'm going with Emmy Martinez of Aston Villa as my goalkeeper. Uh, they're of course taking on Burnley at home. I've gone with Nathaniel Klein of Crystal Palace, uh, who are at home to Brentford, and Kilman of Wolves, who are at home to Everton as my two defenders. I've gone with Vice-Captain Phil Foden and Captain Bernardo Silva as my two players in central midfield, both of Manchester City in this game against Sheffield United. And up top, I've got Huang of uh, Wolves, who are at home to Everton, and Ollie Watkins of Aston Villa, who are at home to Burnley. On the bench, I've got Jordan Pickford of Everton, Pinnock of Brentford, Onana of Everton, and Olise of Crystal Palace. Now, live watch-along link will be out for this game uh, this afternoon for you guys to go and set your reminders for. I'll be live tomorrow, 2.30pm GMT, so I will see you on Saturday afternoon for that. Next up for both sides, Sheffield United in FA Cup third round action. They're taking on Gillingham away uh, in next Saturday at 3pm. Manchester City, they're taking on Huddersfield next Sunday uh, in the FA Cup third round as well. We're not playing in the Premier League now for a couple of weekends until the second weekend into January and then there's a winter break from there so games aren't really coming thick and fast for Manchester City uh, which is good to try and get our team freshened up uh, to get them prepared and get them well rested ready for a big push in the second half of the season remember this is the last game of 2023 as well and there will be a dedication to all those who have passed away in the last year at the Etihad Stadium. On one final note, I wanted to wish you guys a very happy new year and a very prosperous 2024. What a 2023 it's been for us Manchester City fans and hoping 2024 will be just as enjoyable. So there we go. That has been today's video. Thank you everybody for watching. Much appreciated. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below, including your score and team prediction for this game. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 100 likes is the aim. 
Do subscribe if you are new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on. It is free to subscribe. Social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and check out my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Do go and check out today's video sponsor, BetMate. Links and details, they're in the description. And I will see you all for the live watch along for tomorrow's game, 2.30 p.m. GMT. I'll see you then. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now.